the waste material for different value added products. So today uh, here I'm talking today in this because this is about the uh, this FTP is all about waste. So I will be telling you how the waste can be utilized in creating different value added products. So now if we talk about the waste, uh, waste uh, because uh, I will be talking about the biological waste which are coming from the food processing industry. So food processing industry, the biological waste is highly complex. And sorry. Just a minute. Uh, just a minute. I'll uh, try to. Sorry, uh, some uh, civil work is going on. So biological waste is basic, basically is highly complex and then uh, it involves a lot of uh, uh, fraction. It contains a lot of fraction, physical, thermal, chemical, and biochemical processing, they all lead to different fractions in this, uh, the waste which is coming from the food industry. So food process, uh, it's a, uh, now, so this is the, so the waste can come for either from the plant or it can come from the animal derived processing waste. The food, like the plant-based food contains like a lot of uh, residues, uh, cereal residues, it can comprise of different whole or partial organs of the tissues. It can uh, contains like or the in the cereals it can contain the bran, the extracted barley grain or the oils, starch, sugar, which contains a lot of valuable products such as starch, oil, sugars, and uh, anything else. Then uh, in animal derived processing waste, you can have blood, bone, neural tissues, skin, uh, and then uh, the bones, and then the head and viscera in case of the fish, and the, and but in the animal uh, industry. A lot of water is also used, so wastage of the water is an, another issue here in the uh, animal industry. So if we talk about the hierarchy of the uh, different valuable products which we can uh, extract from these uh, waste material. So we start from the like, uh, so first on the top of the list comes the food. If we can create a food out of the base, that is that has the highest value. So, but uh, but that depends upon what kind of waste we are taking. Whether that's uh, like uh, does it can it should not contain any microbial contaminants and so on. So based on that, we can decide whether the waste which is coming can be utilized for producing a new value new value in terms of the food or not. So if we are able to convert that waste into food, nothing like that. That's the feeding the people. So you're creating food out of the waste of the food. So that's on the top of the list. If, if we are not able to convert that into a food uh, like you for human consumption, then second on the list is the animal feed. So second uh, high value added product, high value added product is the animal feed. So you can convert them into animal feed also. And that also not possible, then maybe some industrial utility. That's another possibility which we can go for. And then if it, that's also not possible, then composting is very much possible. And then come after composting, if that is also not possible, then landfill or incineration. So this is the hierarchy of the waste, like uh, utilize value, valorization. So now if it is, uh, uh, so I will be talking about how this uh, valorization of the different food industries can be done and what are the different value added products which can be obtained. So this is the waste which we uh, like obtain from the orange industry. So if we after taking out the juice, uh, we get the this rind. Rind contains a lot of pectin, lot of lot of pectin. So you can extract the pectin around 250 gram of pectin per kg of the peel you can extract. And this can be used as a gelling agent and stabilizer. At MIT University in the post harvest technology student, MSc students, uh, 
during their uh, MSc thesis dissertation, they isolated the pectin from this uh, peel and then they use for production of this uh, juice, uh, a juice uh, in the, using as a gelling agent in the food. And then uh, second after this, uh, RID also contained a lot of essential oil. Essential oils are the oil which are like has a smell and can be used. It has a lot of uh, antifungal, antimicrobial property. So that can be used for uh, uh, for various purposes. And then this contains uh, citronin is the uh, highest compound which is present in the peel. And from the peel you can get this essential oil and the yield of this is around 4 kg per ton of the pulp. And then the then from this uh, seed, seed contains a lot of oil, is contains oil and that oil can be used for the biofuel production. Similarly, after getting the extraction of this uh, pectin and then uh, uh, this essential oil, the remaining trend which is, uh, which is available can be converted into biochar. So biochar has a lot of uh, applications. So and that and uh, and if not biochar, it can also be used for biodegradable packaging material. So depending upon the properties of the waste which you are getting after this one, you can go for any of the application depend, depending upon what you are getting. Similarly, this is the potato and potato uh, uh, for production of the chips and uh, uh, the lot of peel is uh, wasted in the after uh, in the uh, potato chips processing industry. So they, it contains a lot of phenolic compound, compounds like the chlorogenic acid, caffeic acid, the ferulic acid, which are very antiox antioxidant and health promoting act, uh, act, uh, ingredients. So what you can do, uh, you can so the you can uh, extract prepare the extract of the peel and which can can contains a lot of uh, antioxidant compound and can be used developed into a kind of antioxidant pill. Uh, so this has been already been developed over there. So gallic acid, proteochloric acid, genastic acid, these are the various uh, uh, com com compounds which has been isolated from this uh, uh, peel of the potato. So potato peel itself is a very good. Nothing is a waste in, in nature, nothing is a waste. What we call is a waste because uh, we are not able to find any utility out of it. When we find the utility, it's no, no more a waste. Similarly, if we uh, see the tomato, uh, tomato uh, from tomato we get the paste as a puree or the can. We can canning. We do the canning and we prepare the juice out of it. But after the when we prepare these products, we are left with the peel and the seeds. So the tomato, which is called tomato pomace. This pomace can be fractionated uh, into two parts. One is a seed. Seeds can be separated from the pomace and the peel can be separated from the pomace. And then later on, it can be utilized for various seed con as all the seed contains oil. Why? Can anybody tell why the seeds contain oil? Uh, any answers? Yes, participants may interact directly to them. Any participants willing to answer? Why the seed contains oil? Because almost all the seed contains oil. Why? Okay, I'll tell might you. Be, because, man, might be because of fatty acids. Uh, fatty acids, yes. Fatty acids are required, but why it contains uh, fatty acids? It's, it's a source of energy for the plant when it is germinated. At that time, it acts as a source of energy during the time of germination. That's why the oil is a concentrated for, form of energy. Okay, so uh, it's so if you see the seed, when you sow the seed during the time of germination, till the first le two leaf comes, all the energy is provided by the uh, the energy is pro provided and food and energy is provided by the uh, ingredient which is present inside the seed and the oil prov is provides is a source of energy for the plant till the time it has its own leaf for the photosynthesis. Okay, is that yes, clear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so 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 if you talk of of any fruits and vegetables, any plant, any seed, it will contain definitely contain the seed oil. The content of the oil may vary. Like some may contain high, some may contain low oil. 
but the, it all is an essential part of the seeds and some seeds are very have very good oil and this is a peel so peel can be like uh, converted into animal feed after drying and can be incorporated into animal feed as a part of it's not the 100 it's 100 percent it can be used as a feed but the part of uh, it can replace the part of the feed uh, with the uh, uh, with this, uh, 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 it's it can act as a substrate for the animal feed. Then similarly, from the food, it can also be converted into food ingredient, and it can be incorporated into pasta, in the in incorporated into the atta, the flour, and then can convert it to pasta and so on. Similarly, uh, the peel contains a lot of lycopene. Lycopene is a uh, like uh, your carotenoid, and which is good for your eyesight. So lycopene uh, can be isolated, for, extracted from this peel, and then can be can be sold as a uh, very high value added product. Similarly, it contains seed protein. The peel contains protein, and protein can also be isolated and certified. And oil, as I told you, if the oil oil can be converted into biodiesel or uh, beneficial fermentation products and waste absorbents. So similarly, here is a case of the mango. Uh, mango also contains peel as a waste and then it contains the seed uh, uh, as a waste. So this uh, peel, dried peel can, can is this like the orange peel, it can, this also contains a lot of pectin. So this pectin can be used uh, for the gelling as a gelling agent and uh, for clarification of the juice also. So this is a core product of the pectin recovery, like uh, during, after the pectin is recovered, this is the waste which is left over solid co-product of the soil which contains a lot of cellulose and this can be used as a biofuel and then can be liquid with the polyphenol and sugars are also the byproduct of this one. So one uh, like mango uh, we eat but uh, from the peel itself we can get one and then uh, two and three, three, more than three products out of the peel itself. The, uh, I'll talk about the Valorization of waste from the Indian fish processing industry. This is a new project which we are doing at, at MIT University in collaboration with the uh, Sintef Norway and NTNU Norway and then Spain, uh, Carinza Spain. So this is the Revalue Innovative Technology, it's a Revalue project. It's a European Union project, it's sponsored by European Union and, and which is the innovative technologies for improving resource utilization in Indo-European fish value. So this is the objective of this particular projects are to analyze the Surimi value chain and suggest climate friendly methods and concepts for cost efficient supply chain logistics and cold chain management. Because in the fish uh, Surimi, I'll tell you about this later to increase the efficiencies, profitability and environment sustainability of the European and Indian marine processing industry by valorization of the Surimi processing RRM and uh, 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 this RRM is nothing but rest raw material. I'll tell you what is RRM later on and WW into high added value protein and lipid ingredients to evaluate the functionality of derived protein and oil ingredients as food and feed components and to build a basis for joint market exploitation for Europe and India for safe and nutritional ingredients for food and feed application, to establish a sustainable partnership between revenue partners for other relevant European and Indian working in the field of bioeconomy. I hope you people have heard the word of the bioeconomy. Uh, so um, how many of you, can you raise your hand? Please. Okay. Bioeconomy is clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Fine. So these are the partners of this project from India. MIT University is the leading institutions and then Bich Pilani. From Norway, Sinta Fosun uh, uh, and then uh, NTNU and then Spain is Grupo Carenza is a company which is present like uh, leading this project. So if we really look at the uh, fish, it contains a lot of nutritive value. It contains vitamin A, it contains omega-3, then uh, DHA and EPA both, and then it contains vitamin D, vitamin B12, protein, selenium, iodine, iron, 
calcium and zinc. So it's a very highly nutritious food. So if we really uh, look at the global fish production, uh, about uh, this fish production has increased uh, tremendously over the period of time. So consumption, annual per, uh, consumption is 20.3 kilogram per year in the, it was in 2016. And then this is a fish production in India. It has been increasing tremendously from 5.66 to 11.46. So, uh, and uh, out of that, 3.60 comes from the marine sources and then the, from freshwater it comes 4.41 is from the freshwater. This is the growth rate of fish production. It is con continuously increasing. And then if you really see this graph, the inland is uh, fish fishery is increasing uh, quite high. And then this is a state-wise production. So Andhra Pradesh leads the production of the fishery in India. And uh, so in, in, in overall, the, if we see the world production, we are India is the number six in marine fish producing country after China and Indonesia, United States and Russian Federation and Peru. And then we are second in inland fish, fish production after China. So this is the uh, 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 surimi. So surimi uh, is a meat. I, it's a meat which is of is a fish meat. It's a traditional Japanese cuisine manufactured after repeated washing of the fish flesh to remove the soluble protein and other soluble components. Mainly used as imitation meat. So surimi is mainly in produce in India only for the export purposes. A very small amount of the surimi is consumed uh, in like. Uh, in India. Rest is all is exported to either to Japan, to Europe or to US. So this is the surimi production in world. You see the highest is production is in Asia, particularly in uh, and the, particularly China and then uh, come then comes the USA and then the Europe. So since Europe contains less production, so a lot of export goes to the Europe. So surimi production, about 820 tons of surimi uh, is used as, re, uh, as a raw material for production of 2.7 million tons of surimi based products. So you see what, how much, so 820 uh, the tons to 2.7 million tons. So this is really, uh, to produce 820 tons, we have to use a 200 to 7 million tons of the raw material. So it means how much rest material waste we are generating in the production of the surimi. You can imagine yourself. China is leading supplier of the surimi with 1.2 million tons and European Union is major main uh, market for consumption of surimi based product. That's why this project was sanctioned because uh, they wanted to see that if the, as a responsible Hello? consumption, they wanted to convert the waste into products. Participant, what? please mute. Participant, se gaya, Kash. please mute yourself. Participant, please mute. Participants should mute themselves, please. I think Rashmi is. Yeah. Yeah. I am muted. Uh, participant, please keep yourself mute. Yes, ma'am, please. Okay. So main uh, suppliers of the surimi to European Union is after the USA is India. Also. So this is some, these are the different types of fishes which we can use in surimi production. Pink perch, big eye, ribbon fish, lizard fish, croaker fish, uh, the paracunda. So these some are histamine forming, some are non histamine forming. So Pink, this is the pink part. Mainly, uh, pink part is used in majority uh, uh, of the uh, surimi production unit in India. This I am talking about in India. In other countries, other fishes are used for surimi production. So, plenty of rest raw material. Like what we call it as waste here in India. In Norway, they call the waste as rest raw material. It's RRM. So, RRM is the uh, is a word which is used in most of the European country, rather than calling it waste, they, they say nothing is waste, everything is a raw material for something else. So whatever the, so, so this is a raw material for creating some new materials. It's not a waste. 
So fishing uh, industry also generate enormous amount of leftovers annually across the world. These leftovers are generally referred as byproducts or co-products or rest raw materials and include all raw materials including edible, inedible and which is left over while manufacturing main product. So in uh, uh, surimi production, lot of ages had vistra, frames, skin and others such as tails, fins, scale, mince, blood, etc. is produced. So this material may constitute up to 70% of the fish. It means only 30% of the fish is used for production of the surimi, rest is wasted. You can imagine how much waste we are producing in during this uh, surimi production. And then apart not only this uh, waste, in the range of 30 to 50, fish fillet is species dependent, is often in the range of 30 to 50 percent of the fish. Apart from that, we also use huge amount of water. Okay, so so this is a calculation which I have done uh, based on the, uh, the our um, processing of the uh, fish surimi production plant that to produce 300 meter uh, that in the production of 300 meter ton of in a surimi plant per day. This is the amount which is generated. Dehydrated fishes about 300 metric ton. Uh, uh, then quantity of fishes crushed is 250 million ton. Quantity of surimi produced is 100 metric ton. And quantity of restaurant material produces 150 metric tons. So otherwise, 50 percent is like produced as a restaurant material. So we need to create value out of it. Otherwise, it's just a waste. So this restaurant material and surimi produced per 100 metric ton of fresh fish. So it means if we are using 100 metric ton of the fresh fish, how much is the surimi is produced? How much is the other waste produced? So out of that 100 metric ton of the fresh fish, only 32 k, k metric ton is converted into surimi. And then 40 uh, metric ton is, con is the head and viscera which we obtain out of it. Then 20 metric ton is the skin and bones which is uh, we get. 5 metric ton is the scales which we get and the 3 metric ton we get as in the form of the fat. So this is the complete uh, pie chart of the fish and, uh, its product and what we get out of 100 metric ton of the fresh fish. So this is the head and viscera which is produced and 100 TPD should be plant produced from 140 ton or so head and viscera every day. It's a rich source of protein and the fat and can be used for production of the protein, hydrolysate and the oil. So this had a 40 metric ton of hydrogen viscera, which we get from 100 metric ton of fish, uh, contains around 31 metric ton of the water, 2.4 metric ton of the protein, 0.68 ton, uh, ton, metric ton of the fat, 2.8 metric ton of the minerals, and other materials about 4.5 metric ton. So such a so 2.4 metric ton we can fetch from. So about 2.4 percent of the protein can be like uh, produced from the 100 metric uh, ton of the uh, fish, uh, which is produced used for surimi production. Similarly, from the skin and bones, it about 100 TPD tons per day plant, about 60 tons of head and viscera, uh, sorry, 60 tons of skin and bones is produced every day. So this uh, uh, 20 metric ton of skin and bones contains about 13.8 uh, metric ton is the water, which is not used. Then 2 metric ton is the protein, 2 metric ton is the fat, 2 metric ton is the minerals and other others materials are about 2 metric tons. Refiner waste, uh, we can, we can, uh, refiner waste is a waste which comes from the survival production and it contains a lot of good protein. Then uh, I was talking about you that it's not only produced a lot of uh, fish uh, waste material, but it also produced a lot of waste water. Water is a is very critical point because what we use is a very good quality water here because it's a food which we are producing. We cannot use any other type of the water. And then if you really see this particular this thing, this 20 lakh liter of wash water is being produced per day in 100 TPD uh, uh, surimi manufacturing plant. It contains high nitrogen, more than 200 ppm, uh, and that's why it cannot be rejected into uh, 
what you call uh, into uh, after into sea uh, into the main stream of the water because this uh, the permissible limit is only 50 ppm but because it has got a lot of dissolved protein it contains high amount of tautism so this is a problem with the industry so also if we can remove this 200 ppm if we can reduce this nitrogen then this water can be recycled within the plant so we need a technology by which we can recycle this technology that's what we have addressed in this particular project how to recycle this water into the plant and then, then save the water and then reduce the water consumption in the plant wash water uh, so this i will just escape then distribution of nutritional component in uh, rest raw material of pink perch uh, so this is the so if we really see the uh, protein total protein which is contained in the pink perch about 2.4 percent comes from the head and viscera 2.4 metric ton comes from the head and viscera 2 metric tons come from the skin and bones and 4.3 comes from the wash water so wash water contains a lot of protein then in the uh, similarly in minerals 2.8 metric tons is coming from the head and viscera and 2 metric tons is coming from the skin and bones so total this is the total which we can recover from 100 metric ton of fish rest of material so we can recover 4 plus 2 plus 2 so 8 around 8.7 metric ton of the protein from the rest of material which is coming from the uh, surime 100 metric ton of the fish used for the surime production around 8 percent can be recovered so, so what is the utility of this uh, protein uh, skin skin can be used for extraction of the collagen and gelatin which can be used for the food and cosmetic and biomedical industry similarly the viscera the enzymes we can uh, uh, extract different enzymes and uh, the omega 3 protein hydrolysate and then can be used for the as a feed for the animals then uh, bones contains a lot of collagen the gelatin and the minerals and it is alternative to calcium supplements and bone graft material and dental applications and then proteins uh, protein uh, hydrolysate contains uh, omega-3 uh, protein uh, then head contains a lot of protein protein hydrolysate can be prepared and then can use as a source of protein omega-3 fatty acid it contains and contains a lot of minerals and food uh, it can be used as either the food depending upon the quality or the feed if the if the produces of inferior quality little less uh, it doesn't qualify the quality of the food then scales scales also contains collagen and gelatin and uh, they can a natural absorbent for keratinoid bit banks from seafood industry this is in general the application it can be the, from the fish rrm we can produce the meal the oil, the dietary food, enzymes, silage, chitosan, the biogas, after everything is extracted, the rest other material can be converted to uh, biogas. Then organic fertilizer, the fertilizer which is produced from the fish, uh, uh, containing from the fish rest material, contains a lot of nitrogen and give very good plant response. And then cosmetic products for uh, this uh, for skin treatment it is used. Now, correct utilization of the fish co products for when we started this project, we wanted to see how this uh, uh, RRM or the waste material which is generated from the fish industry, how it is being used currently. So, it is uh, mainly it is used for production of the fish meal, and th then it is uh, very crude fish oil is produced, which is used for the production of the uh, which is used uh, in the marine boats for oiling the boats. And then, then this is a fish, fish soluble paste, paste which is produced and which is mixed in the uh, animal feed. So this is the value added product which is being currently used, which is not very high value added products. So, uh, so this is the fish meal is produced uh, around, which contains uh, around uh, around 21 percent is used is produced as fish meal, and five to 15 percent as fish oil and then 4% is converted to soluble paste and rest is water which is discarded. So this is the industry which converts the fish uh, 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 which is a fish restaurant material utilizing industry 
here you can see the different it is being converted into a fish meal uh, which is used for the uh, fish feed so fish meal grades uh, the grade, so depending upon the quality the fish meal can be graded into different uh, for, depending upon the protein content like a standard grade is about contains about 60% of the protein the prime grade contains 62% protein and super prime is 65% and premium grade is 68% protein so depending upon the protein content you can your grade you uh, the fish uh, meal is graded and then accordingly the prices are uh, like assigned to the uh, produce which you are getting from the waste material challenges and opportunity very few studies have been conducted on utilization of co-products as potential nutrient source of the human consumption and other high value products and then uh, fewer studies uh, have been uh, uh, conducted on application of green technologies for processing of the raster material. There's a knowledge gap in characterization of the surimi uh, raster material obtained from only value chain and its potential for nutritional environment and economic return. So industry is looking for the cost effective uh, solutions. So, so whatever the currently is producing, as I show you or sh shown you, is a low value oil. Challenge is to reduce the degradation during the processing so that we can get high quality omega-3 fatty acid oil. Similarly, in the case of protein, it is being used as a low-grade fish meal. The challenge is to use high value protein or protein hydrolysate for food or bioactive substances. Currently, skin and bones are mixed with fish meal and can be used for collagen extraction. So, in this project, what we have we have addressed these uh, uh, these problems, and we have characterized the uh, RRM from the Indian surimi in, in the industry, and we have optimized the process for reduction of nitrogen content for surimi wash water to acceptable limits, and methods have been optimized for production of the protein hydrolysate. So this is the uh, so, so this is the proximate analysis of the pink perch head and viscera which we have done here. Uh, in this one, so it contains a lot of moisture and then the ash content is around 4.3% and then protein is about 6%. This is on the fresh weight basis. Similarly, this is for the skin and bones, the protein content is 10% higher than the skin uh, uh, head and viscera. Then the wash water contains 1% uh, protein, refiner waste contains a lot of 9% pro protein and this is the mineral analysis we wanted to see whether it contains any toxic heavy metals or not so that it can whether we can use it for the food purposes if there's a Ma'am got disconnected, I guess. Sir, if you can pause the recording. Ah, Ma'am is disconnected. Yes, Ma'am. Sir, if you can pause the recording, I guess Ma'am had disconnected. Okay.
there is some connectivity issue with the speaker she'll be joining soon Yes, Rovim, I have joined. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, suddenly. Okay, okay, ma'am. That was a pause. Are you able to see my desktop now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I'll just, yeah. So, okay, uh, so I was talking about that uh, we did this uh, heavy battle analysis just to see whether the this should this contains any toxic battles or not. So before we go into the utilizing into a food products. So we did this uh, EDX analysis, SEM and EDX, and we found uh, that it doesn't contain any toxic heavy metal. So rather it contains calcium, all go, uh, good material. So it can be very well utilized for application of the food material. So I just want to tell you that uh, before you go for uh, like application of any waste, uh, food, particularly in the case of food, you want to apply any uh, like uh, byproducts or co-products or the rest of material or whatever you can call or the waste material into a food kind of things. You must ensure the safety first. For number one, it should not contain any microbiological contaminants. So you should do the microbial analysis first. 
and number two you should also ensure that it should not contain any kind of toxicity toxic materials like heavy metals or pesticides and so on so if your material is free from all these uh, uh, is safe for consumption then only you can you should think of converting into kind of uh, uh, food product otherwise or food or feed particularly and for feed also these kind of uh, restrictions are there so uh, so if your so it's, it's initially it's very important to screen your product for this uh, uh, type of for food safety so we did this heavy metals uh, for skin and bones and it was quite safe no heavy metal was detected because sometimes the fish doesn't contain heavy metal but if fish is coming from the environment which contains heavy metal and it has consumed that water which is contains a lot of heavy metal the fish may uh, the that imprint will come in the fish so similarly for the mineral analysis we did for the head and viscera here also we could not find any toxic material toxic heavy metals were absent it means our fish uh, head and viscera and the skin and bone which we have obtained from the surimi producing production plant is absolutely safe for production for production of the food material obtaining the food material so we optimized the uh, this uh, so we did the, the recovery of the protein from the head and viscera and the from skin and bone both and then uh, while doing the enzymatic hydrolysis so we hydrolyzed the protein using the enzymes and then we separated the protein hydrolyzed it from it freeze dried it and then we did the characterization of it so this uh, initially we did the chemical hydrolysis we did the optimization and later on we did this uh, the enzymatic hydrolysis of this one and then this is the mass balance where you can find out we want to see so when we optimize we wanted to have the highest uh, or like that our uh, hydrolyze that uh, our method should give the highest amount of the protein hydrolysis and less amount of the sediments sediments are uh, and then uh, and then so and little bit of emulsion so we have based on that we have selected uh, optimized the method which is contains 80% of the protein hydrolysis so this is the protein hydrolysis which we have obtained and after that um, based on the yield uh, of this one we have optimized then we determine the degree of hydrolysis because it should not be if the ideal degree of hydrolysis is 15 to 20 percent so anything between 15 to 25 percent is very good for the so because it contains the optimum length of the peptides which we uh, which are good for digestibility and which are also good for uh, for bioactivity so this is the one uh, which we have so this is the uh, bone uh, head and viscera uh, from bromopiplin enzyme this is the uh, head and viscera from uh, uh, endogenous enzyme this is head and viscera uh, protein hydrolysis which is obtained from alkylase these are the different enzymes which we use to see which enzyme is most effective in giving the highest amount of this one so we found that alkylase is giving the highest uh, amount similarly here for skin and bones also alkylase and bromopropylene both enzymes were same so since alkylase is much easier and cheaper so we use the alkylase for the uh, optimization of the hydrolysis then we did the antioxidant uh, activity uh, just to see whether it is giving some kind of antioxidant activity so the antioxidant activity of this uh, hydrolysate was very moderate it was not this is the control for propyl chelate which gives around 45 to 48 to 50 percent uh, uh, antioxidant activity whereas the our uh, uh, protein hydrolysate it gave only uh, 15 percent uh, maximum was 27 uh, percent in case of a skin so uh, then we did the essential amino acid analysis just to see like uh, what is the composition of the essential amino acid which is uh, coming in this protein hydrolysate based on which we can see the or uh, we can determine the quality of the protein and then uh, so we found uh, so so the alkylase contained uh, this is the essential amino acids percentage which is present in different enzymes so uh, alkylase again gave the highest amount of the essential amino acids both in uh, 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 in hydrolysis this is in, in sediment so this so now uh, the thing is that the both sediment cannot be used either as a uh, cannot be used as food but it can definitely used as a feed purposes so we will use this protein uh, hydrolysate for food products for food production 
and then this sediment as a for the feed production. So this is the conditions which we have optimized uh, for based on the uh, using the RSM, and then uh, this is the yield factors. So then uh, we did a consumer survey just to see like uh, how the consumer will feel if if he is told that uh, this food is produced from the uh, byproducts of the fish surimi producing industry. So we did this uh, little bit uh, of survey, and then uh, where we uh, had uh, both in. Uh, so this is the result which we get that uh, uh, what is a fish product they would like to uh, use. So it was a fish tag. It was in India. It's not so popular, but in Spain it was uh, in Spain or Norway it was a totally different response, which which I am not presenting here. So fish targets was the most uh, popular uh, uh, food, food which was found to be ready to eat kind of thing. Then uh, we asked the, uh, the in terms of the uh, what you call uh, uh, so uh, then we did this survey of this uh, sorry I'll just acceptability of the food prepared for the fish co products so you can see the acceptability highest is seven, uh, and then uh, one, and then four, and then on the scale of ten. So you can see, so its uh, acceptability is also uh, quite okay. And then, uh, so about fifty-six six percent respondent uh, had lower acceptability, while thirty-two percent has uh, raised. They will prefer it equally as the as good as the fresh ones. And then, uh, or twelve percent uh, has they they will have a higher acceptability. So, uh, skin and uh, bones, uh, we have prepared. We are targeting the uh, biofilms from the collagen, and uh, then from the wash water, we are targeting the removal of the protein. So, from the wash water, we did this acid treatment, and then we could remove as all the protein from this uh, nine, around 90 or the 90 percent protein so now the water which is uh, contained a high amount of protein uh, can be uh, can be the, the protein can be removed with with precipitation and then the water can be reused in this uh, industry so this is the protein precipitate which you can see and this is the wash water before the treatment this is the wash water after the treatment the picture is not so clear but you can see the sediments over here in wash white. So to conclude, I would say that rest of material obtained from sodium industry has high nutrition value. It has underutilized potential as source of protein and acids are effective in precipitation of soluble protein from wash water. This project is still going on. We couldn't do uh, during the lockdown, but we have now uh, extracted the gelatin from it. Uh, the gelatin is being used for production of the uh, soup, ready to eat uh, soup, and then uh, then so not so, sorry, the protein hydrolysate is being used from to develop the ready to eat soup, uh, and we are trying to see if we can use it for malnutrition targeting the malnutrition population uh, and uh, to remove this protein deficiency. And secondly, uh, for the gelatin, we are trying to uh, increase the juiciness of this uh, nuggets, uh, the the what you call the uh, the meat balls uh, which we use for the frying, and then we that the gelatin will include the juiciness of the meat balls. So that we are, ha have already done, but I am not presenting the result because uh, uh, this is being finalized. Okay, so this is in nutshell about this all about the. Uh, this uh, for this uh, food processing industry waste utilization. So, if, so you just have to think about it, and then you can definitely lead to some kind of uh, uh, new products out of it. Because nothing is waste. The waste can also contains some useful materials, and you need to uh, explore it and then convert it into kind of utility product. Thank you. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Doctor Roma. Yes, th thank you so much, sir. Uh, the participants, if you would like to ask questions, you can directly interact or you can put your questions in the chat box. I'll stop.
anyone wants to ask any question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I wanted to ask one one question to you. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, so, since the different kind of waste food uh, based uh, waste material uh, is uh, the processing does not contain any uh, sustainability aspect as well into this. Uh, processing, yes, yeah. it does, it does, it does. I mean, uh, suppose if we are going to treat the poultry and fish based waste, so yes. uh, what are the different type of waste material are being generated out of this particular processing? No, uh, that's what I say. We don't leave any waste out of it. We need to utilize each and everything. Like okay. uh, when I was talking about this protein hydrolysis production, if you really mm -hmm. see, so whatever yes. way it, it, it was giving the sediment as a waste, okay? okay but yes. that sediment we utilize as a for, uh, fish feed. Okay. Uh, and uh, one very interesting I mean, uh, aspect. Whatever is the remaining bi biological material that you can decompose, Yes. Decompose and use as a fertilizer. So basically, it is a completely zero waste policy, right? It's a zero waste, yes, definitely. Yeah. It's a zero waste. And uh, one thing that is very interesting out of it that uh, how can we go for some uh, entrepreneurship setup? Uh, such uh, since these are uh, having a wonderful opportunities into yes. a specific domain. So if somebody want to go into entrepreneurship kind of opportunities, so what are the basic steps to go into that domain? Uh, for entrepreneurship, it's very easy. The government of India is giving a lot of venture fund. Venture funds are also available, and a startup fund is also available. And we have an incubator in MIT University. If somebody is interested, we can incubate that one. We give all sort of to for the setup of the company and everything. So that's okay. not an issue at all. That's and the one. Yeah. Hmm. And ma'am, there is one. We have question. about uh, in our food technology department. Many students have like uh, util converted to entrepreneurs using this, uh, where utilizing the waste material. Even in really horticulture, good. students also. That is really good. And mm -hmm. one more question is there that can we use the fish protein from waste for the formulation into medium for fermenting microorganism? Yes, definitely we can use it, but it will contain a lot of high nitrogen. So you need to see like CN uh, ratio. Uh, how that can be managed so that you need to see it here. Yeah. So maybe after the removal of the protein or something, whatever is the waste you are getting, the sediment that we make a use as a media. So uh, one last question, ma'am. Um, uh, as per your opinion, what would be the whole soul capital which is required, the total capital which is required to set up uh, these kind of venture? Uh, the, for the this kind of ventures, the cost would not, uh, the maximum uh, uh, would be around 20, 20 lakhs to 25 lakhs. But the government also give fund like uh, the BIREC. You yes, can yes. approach the BIREC big grant. They give 50 lakh rupees for yes, about 18 months they give. And that can be utilized to explore your idea very well. Okay. But that is a kind of loan facility, right? No, no, it's not a loan. It's not a loan. Okay, uh, so that's a that's a grant. Yeah, it's a grant. By it's a by okay. big grant. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Yeah, a uh, such a wonderful talk and uh, re really very great insights into this. Any anyone who is related to waste management field can go into this venture and uh, set up their own startup like things. And uh, I'm really very grateful to you that you have accepted our invitation and uh, presented your such a really enlightful talk. And now I would like to invite Roma to present word of thanks. Please. So much, ma'am. Uh, it was really a delightful uh, uh, session, and uh, we were uh, very uh, thankful to you to just uh, accept uh, the invitation and uh, all the experience and all the thoughts which you have shared. It was really thought provoking, and I hope so. All the audience, uh, uh, all the participants had uh, enjoyed the session. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, we look forward for uh, future uh, interactions with you. Thank you. I apology for this uh, little bit of problem in between which and <laughs> There are technical issues always there into the uh, online presentations. <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's a problem, problem when we work time. from home. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, ma'am. Okay. And participants will be uh, meeting again at uh, 2 p.m. with uh, Dr. Sanuja Berry, ma'am. And uh, Nutan, ma'am, uh, we are having called uh, Dr. Sanuja, ma'am, as well. Oh, Shanuja is coming. Good. Yeah. Good. So, uh, since the. What time she is coming? 
pardon ma'am what time she will be presenting uh, she'll be uh, coming at 2 pm 2 pm okay i'll join yeah. Thank, thank you. you thanks a lot thank you thank you thank you thanks ma'am thank you vikas and thank you dr roma thank thanks ma'am thank you thank you ma'am
Gracias. 